Hi, I am professional wildlife photographer Paul Miguel and this tutorial is all about photographing birds in flight against the sky. Uh, you may have done this yourself and come out with underexposed images, very very common problem. So I'm going to give you some tips and techniques how you can adjust the exposure and hopefully stop your images from coming out as silhouettes. So when you're photographing your birds in flight, uh, the exposure is going to be massively influenced by the background if you're using an automatic or a semi-automatic exposure mode. So commonly when you're photographing against the sky, the sky is very light, lighter than mid-tone, and the camera doesn't think it needs to give it as much exposure, therefore it actually underexposes and you end up getting these silhouettes. Now at this point I'm going to assume that you're using a metering mode that is taking most of the viewfinder into account so you're not using spot metering. I wouldn't advise using spot metering on birds in flight um, simply because you've got to keep the focus point on there and it can be quite easy to drift off as you're tracking the bird. So I'm going to give you three options now which hopefully are going to help you to get the correct exposure. The first method is exposure compensation. So you may be able to adjust this with a wheel, such as on this Canon camera, I can do it with a big wheel on the back of the camera, or there may be a plus minus button on the top or possibly around the back. So that's your exposure compensation dial. And when you know that the bird's gonna fly against the light sky, you wanna adjust that in the plus direction. So it really depends on a number of factors of how much plus compensation you need to do. But probably anywhere from plus two thirds, maybe even to plus two at the extreme range. The second option is to use auto exposure lock. Uh, this is another button often on the back of the camera which is probably AEL on this Canon, it's got an asterisk. And the way this works basically is that you can lock the exposure. So again if you're using um, some kind of automatic exposure mode, if the bird's flying against the grass for example, you can hit that button and it will lock the exposure that the camera had at the time. Then if the bird goes up against the sky or anywhere else, that exposure won't change. You've locked the exposure in. And then when you want to come back out of that, you just tap the button again. Um, so I think that's a really good option really. Again, it really relies on you knowing that this problem might occur and just being aware of it. But if you're able to think ahead that the exposure may suddenly become a problem, then you can just hit this button and the exposure is locked in. And the third option is just to use manual exposure. So rather than using an automatic exposure mode and leaving some of that up to the camera, just take control of it yourself and use manual settings. So take a reading off a neutral tone, such as the green grass or a deep blue sky. Set your shutter speed and aperture as you want them for the flight shots. And then what happens, wherever the bird flies, whatever the background behind it, it's not going to influence it at all because you've locked that exposure in completely and nothing's going to change. So that's a really good option, particularly if the light's consistent. Um, if the light isn't going to change, you can just set the camera manually. And as long as the bird is being lit in the same way, then the exposure is going to be accurate every time. One thing worth noting is if you're dealing with blue skies, the whole sky is not actually of the same exposure value. So if you're shooting towards the horizon, the lower part of the sky, it's actually going to be much lighter than if you're shooting almost directly up against that really deep blue. So you're going to get different exposure values depending on where you're actually shooting towards. So I really hope that you found that tutorial useful and that it helps in your own bird photography. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, do consider subscribing to my photography channel and I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon.